So this session is best practices for security and environments in the new Power Platform Admin Center. My name is Nikita and I'm a PM at Microsoft. So basically what we're going to go over today are sign of some like high level overviews of what are environments and how does security fit into this and hopefully like at the end I'd like to take you through a demo of the new admin center to show you what you can do there and how we're trying to make things easier for you guys and what's coming up uh, going forward. Alright, so let's start with environments. So what is an environment? Um, for those of you who are more familiar with Dynamics, uh, an environment is the same thing as an instance in this case, um, but we're moving towards a uh, different terminology. We want to make sure we're all on the same page there. So essentially, they're just a container for you to think about like where all of your apps and flows can be managed, and there will be users and permissions, and um, if you do provision like a CDS database, those would be per instance as well. Um, some things to note, environments are tied to a geographic location, so whenever you make something, that's something to consider uh, when you're putting it together. And a, a way to think about it is different types of environments are targeted towards different types of people. Um, like for example, like I go over it a little bit in the next slide. So, so these are the five different types of environments, trial, developer, default, sandbox, and productions. I don't want to go into too much of a detail here, so I did include a link to our documentation. Um, which provides like a much more detailed view of what exactly you can do there um, and help you figure out you know which one is right for you and uh, if anyone needs the link after the fact just come see me and I can get that to you um, all right so moving on more to the security section so we're going to talk about two types of environments here an environment that has provisioned a CDS database and an environment who that hasn't so we'll start with the easy one. There's no CDS database provision in the environment. So there is basically two sections here. There are two roles, which makes it nice and easy. There's an environment maker and admin. And an environment admin is someone who basically controls the entire environment. They have visibility to everything. And the person who creates the environment is by default given that admin role. And environment maker can see what they have permission to see and has like the autonomy to you know make apps and flows and things like that or different resources within the environment itself. And then each resource also has its own level of permissioning, but that kind of stays constant throughout. So this is a view of how to assign roles in an environment without CDS. So like I said, there's only two roles and um, you can basically just click in them and whatever users are a part of your tenant, you can add them to specific roles um, and you know make changes here and there uh, as well. So where things get a little bit more complicated is when you add a CDS database to your environment. Um, I like to say robust because it's a nicer word for complicated. So any the kind of environment roles go away and now you will have a list of a lot of different roles and I like saying robust because you can really do a lot with it. Um, and if you have previously assigned any of these environment roles, like a maker, admin, to an environment that didn't have CDS and then you choose to add a database later, then those roles will get mapped to whatever the CDS equivalents are. So for an admin, a sysadmin, or system admin, and for a maker, it's still an environment maker, but just the CDS version. And so here are some key points. So the screenshot on the side is what our security role creator looks like. So like I said, robust, you can kind of go through and really, really in a detailed fashion decide what you want people to have access to so that you, know, you can protect your data and the right people can see the right things. Um, it goes all the way down to a field level. You can you have that, that level of granularity. And so one thing to point out too, um, so a, a couple key points here. So when you add a user to your tenant, um, if your environment doesn't have a security group, which you can decide when you create it, then every user in your tenant will be synced to this environment. They might not be able to use it or access it or anything like that, but they will be synced to it. So one thing that we like to point out, it's obviously it's not required, but we suggest that you create a security group, and I'll walk through kind of like a flow um, after this, but to make sure that you know who you want to sync to your environment, and it's like a, a way for you as an admin to have more control on what people are seeing. 
And in addition, so once you know you have all these users, you have this environment, like it's everyone's ready to go. But most of the time, if a user is trying to get somewhere and they can't see it, it's because you haven't assigned them a role. So without a security role assigned to the user, they, they really can't do anything. And even if you give them a direct link to your environment, they won't be able to see it because they don't have the right permissions. And everyone gets really sad. So make sure as soon as you know users are synced in, you're assigning them roles. And that's going to be really important. So this is kind of like a flow. So you start off in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And this is where you actually get to add your users, you know, assign them the appropriate licenses and create those all important security groups. And then once kind of all of that squared away, you can go to currently the Power Apps Admin Center, but in the future, the Power Platform Admin Center coming soon to create your environment and whether they are a CDS or a non-CDS environment there. And then once you do that, in the Power Apps and also in the Power Platform Admin Center, you can assign security roles to your users so that they have all the permissions that they need. So I'm going to move on to a just a quick walkthrough of kind of what we have in the Power Platform Admin Center today. And I'm going to start calling it PPAC. I hope you understand it's kind of a mouthful. So um, let me switch to this real quickly. All right, so you can get here by going to admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. And um, so this is kind of where you land it's still in preview right now, but we are working really hard, you know, trying to combine the Dynamics 365, Power Apps Flow, and Power BI admin experiences all into one place. And the goal is to have all that put together at least as much as we can by this October. But right now, we do have some great features in here. And so I'm going to focus mostly on environments, but please go check it out and, you know, provide us with feedback. Feedback is very important. So. Here, as an admin, you can see a list of all your environments. And right now, some of them if, may not show up here, but they will show up in the Power Apps Admin Center. So that's one of those things that we're kind of working on. Um, and so if you click on environment, so this is just a production environment. This is a CDS environment. It does have a database, and we can tell because it shows us. Um, and so right now, it's pretty basic. So you can see you know, details, and you can edit properties for your different environments so that you kind of have a nice place to look at it. And for those of you who have seen the old Admin Center, this UI is a really big upgrade. <laughs> um, and so updates and things like that. And so this is called our Environment Hub. And it's something that we are really trying to build and make sure that it's usable for you guys as admins. And I think the best way we can do that, you know, besides talking to you, is by getting a lot of feedback. We, we really look at feedback. You know, there's a button here. And oh, wrong, wrong tablet. A button here so that you can provide us with feedback on you know what you think works, what you think doesn't work, and what you want to see here. Because really, this is a place for you to come look at and see what you need to take action on. And if it's not showing you the information you need, then you can't do your job as well. So the second part of this is talking a little bit about environment configuration. So one thing that we do have now is if you click on settings up here. It takes you to a nice wall of links. Um, and so right now, you can see that some of these, oh, this one doesn't. One second, let me. Um, All right, so you can see there are two types of links here. So the ones that have been already migrated into our new UI don't have that little square to it. So it's not a lot, but we are in the progress of uh, you know moving things and making sure that everything here is relevant to you. So just to walk through a little bit of like what the pages look like, we we have them. We try to make everything more readable, um, you know, you know, easier to understand instead of like lots and lots of text boxes and like a, a better way to like think about it from an information architecture perspective. So you have all of the things that you need here to help configure your environment um, and everything. So for things that are linked out, they will take you to whatever the experience is currently. For example, security roles because we talked about security roles. So it will link you here. And then, so you still can do everything you could do. Um, but 
you know, changes will be coming, so this is a great place to keep track of things that are new releases and new features and things like that. So, all right. So talking about new features, um, so I just wanted to just give you a quick list of things that are coming soon. Um, so first of all, getting to one admin center. Like I said, the goal is to be able to combine Power Apps Dynamics and Microsoft Flow all into one place to make administration a lot easier. Um, and it's not on here, but as I mentioned earlier, being able to create environments from the Power Platform Admin Center, uh, more analytics and lifecycle operations for sandbox uh, environments. For those of you who are familiar with that, right now we do have copy and reset, both are live and backup and restore are coming soon. Um, and also the settings and configuration experience, continuing to migrate things from the old, you know, Dynamics web client and making sure that all of that's, you know, up to date and easy to use. And as I did mention, just as a quick thing before questions, um, we, we love getting feedback. Feedback is the most important thing to us. So if you are willing, besides the forms that are on the actual admin center, if you'd like to join and be a research participant, it like would really help us out a lot. And again, if you didn't catch this, I'll have that. I'll actually, I just keep this up while we do questions um, if anyone wants to do that. So yeah, we got about like, eight minutes left. I'll just open it up to any questions that people have. Sure, so right now, or the goal is that you should be able to see all of your environments, regardless of their power apps or dynamics, so you will see them all in one list. How you configure them or what you can do with them would obviously be different depending on which environment it is, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so, um, for, yeah, so right now you can do it in the Dynamics 365. So yes, we are migrating that functionality over, improving it so that you can then do it here. And so those are scheduled to be, you know, released into production soon. Right now, no, they, they are this, it's just migrating the same functionality. So not workspaces, at least not right now, but the instances and environments in Power Up, yes. So they, but now they'll all be called environments. So. Um, I'm not sure about that, but I can connect with you after and see if I can find out. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dynamics environments on Power Apps and Flow admins. So I, as an admin, I see the environments, but I don't know if these users are able to freely create flows and apps. I might have couldn't really answer that. Sure. So I think that's more of a licensing question. So can I sync with you after that? Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Could you clarify what you mean? So it's individual for the environments, yeah. All right, cool, I'll be up here um, if anyone has any other questions and please sign up to be a research participant um, and thank you.